the Oysterman of Whitby. Many years ago, oysters weren't deemed to be a delicacy of the rich as they are today. They were in fact thought of as a poor man's food, and a lot of working class people up and down the coast of the United Kingdom depended heavily on oysters for a meal, and this was no different in Whitby. A familiar figure around at the time was a man by the name of Gadji Clark, more commonly known as the Oyster Man. He would wander the streets shouting Oysters Alive or Oysters Alive, offering his wares to the locals. And when the sun dropped and the moon rose, he would carry his large bag of oysters to the local public houses. Now on one cold November night, the oyster man was beckoned inside the Golden Lion public house by a large man whom the oyster man did not recognise. The man in question went by the name of John Smith. You see, no one knew where John Smith called home as he would disappear for weeks on end. But he always returned to Whitby. It was discussed in whispers where he would go. Some said he was a highwayman, others said he was a smuggler. And many believed he was a millionaire aristocrat who had sold his soul to the devil. Smith used to ride around the town on one of his many thoroughbred horses and madly cackle as he did so. It was known he was bad news and that he should be avoided at all cost. The oyster man with his large bag of oysters entered the Golden Lion public house and proceeded to make his way over to Smith's table where he politely inquired if Smith would like to buy some oysters. However, Smith instead began insulting the oyster man who eventually decided it was time for him to leave, albeit extremely annoyed at the insults from Smith. The oyster man muttered some unpleasantries on his way out of the pub in relation to Smith. Smith heard the mutterings of the oyster man and jumped up in a furious rage, grabbed the sack of oysters from the oyster man and threw them into the open fire. He then proceeded to threaten to do the same to the now terrified oyster man, who in a panic pulled out a knife he carried for opening oysters and stabbed Smith. To everyone's surprise, the oyster man delivered a killing blow, accidentally striking Smith's heart, who fell dead on the spot. Though not found guilty of murder at his trial, the oyster man never forgave himself for what he had done, and less than a year later, he died from remorse and guilt he felt regarding that fateful November night. Now to this day, the guilt-ridden ghost of the oyster man can be seen shuffling through the many alleyways of Whitby whilst crying out his distinctive Oysters Alive or Oysters Alive. If you are unfortunate enough to encounter him, it is advised that you keep your hands firmly by your side until he has passed you by completely.